Are we all set? You ready? Everyone have their form? Don't bring your glasses. Everyone else? Everyone's good? Today's topic is knitting, right? No? Belly dancing then, I'm not sure. Okay. Sit, someone else? Okay. So, and are you guys okay? It's up to you guys. I always, always leave it up to you guys. You okay if I take my mask off? You guys okay? Okay. Give you the face reveal. I know, it's scary. <laughs> so, I'm Dr. Tony. I'm the chiropractor locally here in Upland. Okay, I've done this for at least a few years, this uh, class. And what I want to, when I go over, usually I rotate my classes from back pain, neck pain, sciatic pain. Stretching, posture, sometimes food, mindset, and all the stuff I normally do. Today's about stretching, okay? Who learned how to stretch when you were young? Like a teenager. Not me. Uh, maybe, maybe, yeah. Some people have. People learn how to stretch, usually why? Because they have an injury. All right, I have patients come in, I have a lot of construction patients that I see, and a lot of them are strong, they don't have the flexibility component. My job is to teach them how to stretch, when to stretch, why to stretch, so the injury they have now, or whatever is going on with their life, they can recover from and then maintain that routine. Okay? Part of the class talked about routine. How do we set up a routine for you, whatever works for you? For me, I'm a morning person. I stretch in the morning about 4.30 in the morning, then from there I go, oh my gosh, so really? But what I, what I do, I do a 515 workout class every day before I even go to the gym. I'm with my buddy's gym now, it's his house gym. I went at 515 in the morning because I want to get it done. And my, my wife's a night owl. I'll go to bed and I'll wake up and she'll still be reading in bed. Like, I'm in bed by 9, 930. Okay, she's in bed by maybe 930 reading and then she's asleep. And then she'll kick me and go, stop snoring. I'm like, sorry, that's what I do sometimes. Okay. But can we find out whatever works for your routine? I'm a routine, so what I do is I wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, stretch for about 15 minutes, and then I go about my morning to get to my buddy's house, and we work out, whatever we do, okay? If you're a night person, fantastic. There's no right or wrong. When you feel the most, if you want to call it accessibility, you can find a routine that's going to work for your schedule. Pick up grandkids in the afternoon. You have to take care of other people, too. My, my morning, everyone's still asleep in my house, even my dog still asleep, so I can get my stuff done by the time I come home. All right? So to start, why is stretching important? Why? Why is it important? What do you think? Your bones, your, your, it, 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 it breaks two things. I go both your bones, your hard tissue, okay, which includes your joints, along with your soft tissue, which includes your muscles and ligaments. Muscle ligaments are two different things, though. Okay, muscle, if, if I have my bicep muscle here, the belly of the muscle is where most of the meat is, where the muscle is itself. Your tendon is basically, your tendon connects to your elbow from your bicep and up to your shoulder. It's the end part of the muscle. That tendon is where the weakest part of the muscle is, so if the muscle is straight in the middle, the belly, it can cause you to feel elbow pain or shoulder pain if it's your bicep, bicep muscle. So you want to make sure if you go to the muscle, we go to the tendon, which is part of the ligament, and then becomes ligament inside the joint itself, too. We want to stretch both out differently. The muscle and ligaments both, they have two phases of stretching. One is your plastic phase, or elastic phase, where it can stretch, and then bounce back the elastic phase. The other phase, where we stretch it beyond what it's used to, it can actually cause micro tears, which is not a bad thing, called your plastic phase. Okay? That's where you grow muscle. How does muscle grow? by becoming longer and thicker. So by having a longer, thicker muscle, what does that give you? More strength, less chance of injury, more endurance. Someone comes in and they have muscle atrophy in their arm because they have a nerve pain or an injury. Muscle atrophy is when the muscle will shrink. My job is to make the muscle longer so they can start building strength over time by first stretching and then strengthening. If something is tight and you try to strengthen it, it's just going to make it tighter. So you have to make it looser first. So even when you start working out building strength down the line, it's going to make it tighter. So you have to maintain that routine of stretching, hint, the class. And then the strengthening becomes easier to avoid injury. 
What happens in January 1st, or for most people, January 1st in America? Yeah. What do we do? All that holiday we built up since Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Like, okay, it's getting way too tight. I can't breathe anymore. Start working out. But if you don't have stretching routine going into working out, now you're making the muscle working out, you make the muscle tighter, that's how you have injuries. So it keeps me busy, so thank you very much. You came off the same busy that time of year. Okay? But can we avoid injury by having routine? So we start with making the muscle, finding it basically, let's start it this way, is how do you set up a routine? Okay? What's your, what's your routine for you going to be like? And, and again, my routine is morning, I want to get it out of the way, get up early, that point, done, cup of coffee. You guys are like, I'm still sleeping then, 5 o'clock in the morning, so it's not even up yet. No, why? Okay? And also, once you figure out time day for you, morning, afternoon, or even lunch time to go to lunch break, that's fine too, is what location of your home or gym do you like to work out? I work out at a gym or buddy's garage because if I work out at home, I get distracted easy. There's laundry to do, something to clean up. And I'll something to do around the house so you're like, water some grass or something. I'm going to go do a gym because my mindset is when I go there, boom, I'm going to go work out. I stretch in my living room because that's where my mat is. I'll leave my mat there at night. Along with my roller I use too. I'll go over that, what that means in a second. But it allows me to go, okay, this is my location so I know, boom, when I get there, I stretch. Because I don't want to think about it. But think about it and go, should I stretch today? Should I not? Uh, what's happened? The, that thing on your shoulder goes like, the lazy person goes, well, I just wait till tomorrow. Let's do it tomorrow. Why, why do it today? You no, know, it's always tomorrow. So you want to be able to just get up and go. I, when I sometimes I work out, and I, I'll go to my buddy's gym and goes, my friend goes, she goes, oh, your shirt's on backwards again. I'm like, it's possible. I, I changed the dark. I don't know. So I, I, I just go to go. That point, once I get there, I'll figure things out. So once you figure out your time of day your, and also your location, maybe your home, maybe your living room, maybe a room in your, in your, in your place, at that point, what do you need equipment-wise, okay? I have certain things that I use, and on the floor you can see too in the video, it's a mat, I use a mat at home, even on my rug, because the wife gets upset with me. I use my other, my other tools I use on my rug, it wears out the rug, so she gets mad and buys another one without even telling me, which is weird to me, but she does without telling me. I'm upset for a day. But at that point, what we do is also, I use, I use a roller, but this is kind of like it, where it's a hard material where it allows you to stretch over the material. And I'll show you what that means for some stretch we'll get to the other end. I'll show you what that means with this with this this roller. Okay. Also I use too is a room stick. This is a stick from Home Depot about probably ten years ago that I have in my office now. But what it does it helps me stretch my shoulders, um, some other parts of my legs too sometimes to used to stretch my overall body. And I'll show you how to use this one. I leave a, a like a little swiffer in my pantry by the kitchen. So I know where it is every day unless my wife moves it, because for some reason I don't know why. At that point, I'll, I'll have this ready to go. So again, why? I don't have to search in the morning, the stretch, but I want to make sure it's all there. I'll think about it, right? Okay. Any questions yet? What else could you? Yes. Yes. Is it better to stretch like in a swimming pool, like the YMCA has swimming pool, and all the gyms have swimming pool? Yeah, I'm okay with that, but can you go to a swimming pool every day? That's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> Accessibility. Yeah. I, because I stretch, I go. I tell people stretch every day. I tell my kids that my kid patients, and my kids sometimes too, only stretch on days and with why. I go, what day is that? I go, look it up, Google it, you'll find out, you'll see. But the reason is because we're moving every day, right? We're always moving every day because that movement allows muscles to tighten up. We, sometimes we can plan our day so much. The problem is some of our day goes, not do this, 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 and this. If, if you have a routine every day, either start or finish with a routine, your body is ready for the next day, it's rested, ready to go. So having that accessibility all day long, and, and in a pool, fantastic, if you have it available to you every day. But if you don't, then how do you make sure you get your routine in, no matter what the weather is, or no matter what location it might be for you? Okay, so, any questions before we get, yes? I do dancing. Fantastic, good. I, I'm Puerto Rican from New York, so I have the music. Good. Salsa music. Fantastic. Yeah. So that's what I do with the music. This is you. If I start moving like that, I'm gonna break an ankle. No. Oh, well, it's like okay, guys, that didn't work for me. But I do that. But I had a stroke, so this uh, side is a little different. But that allows allows the movement to continue going and going and going, no matter how much you can do, and right? Weights. Yes. yes. Everything. We have to. 
whatever works for you. But having that routine down every day allows you the equipment, the right equipment for you, allows you to work even to like buy a water bottle also. Use a water bottle stretch. Instead of you can have a broomstick or if you do or not, using a water bottle stretch also too. Your muscles loose. And could you, do you have to do this once a day? Or can you do more than that? More than that, right? It's not a communist country. You can do whatever you want to do. You can stretch white in between. Some people do it between commercials. Or when, they're, when, they're, when they're resting, watching a movie. My wife goes, what are you doing? I'm going to stretch. <sighs> Never sits down. No, I don't. Why the stretch and not stretch? Okay? So allow your body to move whenever you can is the key. There is no, there's no limitation per se. And when we're stretching, when we stretch that muscle band, bicep tendon for one, two, I'll use that same, same example, is how far should we stretch? What do you think? Where it's painful, like, ugh. Where you go, mm, that's a little uncomfortable. Fantastic. First time I stretch my patients, when I show them a stretch for one, two, I want to see their face. Okay, when I see their face and I bring their, and I bring their leg over or neck over, they go, oh. They go, perfect, that's where we want to start. Oh, really? Yep. Because mm -hmm. that muscle has to go beyond what it's used to. Oh. That has to get to the close, it has to get close to the plastic phase to cause a change, right? If I just move my arm naturally, go, okay. All right, that's doing nothing at all, I'm fine. <laughs> but if I move it to where like, oh, I feel that stretch, I'm getting the ligaments to stretch, muscle stretch, joint to stretch, to allow things to move more, to make that next movement, maybe a strength exercise, easier. Doing laundry easier. My body's ready for that, now that heavy, lo uh, that increased load with my movement, instead of being more tight in that one. Once the muscle's uh, joint is tight, chance of injury. You want to stretch where that you feel a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, not when I say painful. When it's painful, your muscle will actually start to guard and tighten. That's when you go, okay. Now I got to back it off a little bit. You want to find that comfort zone for you, that uncomfort zone for you, allows you to stretch where it's uncomfortable, but not where the muscle starts to tighten up on. I got come in in January. He had torn his bicep tendon, so he was like this. I was like, okay, how far can you go? It feels comfortable here. I asked, what do you mean am I uncomfortable? It starts to hurt, I'm like, okay, perfect, let's go a little further. Oh, okay, a little further, oh. Within a week, this felt comfortable for him, so, went for, so he now understood what I meant. But it takes that initial shock to go, okay, I can survive that. And when, it's, when it gets painful, you're gonna cause muscle tearing, but you're not gonna get there. It's hard, it's, hard, it's hard to cause pain to yourself, so torture yourself, okay? Next one, how long should you stretch? Length of time, you think? Throw a number out there. 20 minutes. No. Half hour? You mean the total? I mean, wait, no. okay, good, 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 good. 20 minutes total, yes. And, but it depends how much stretch you're doing, though, too. But how much individual exercise stretching should you do? How much should you hold the stretch for? 30, 30 seconds. I'm, like, I'm, I'm between 30 seconds for a muscle and one minute for a ligament. How many times? One to two times. Based on body part, right? If I wake up the next day and go, man, I think I pulled my calf muscle, I may stretch out three times. This is all gray. We want to do it long enough where it's effective, though. 30 seconds minimum, one minute is sufficient. And if it's, if it's certain body parts, maybe just once. I'm good with that. You're up to three sets of 10 and all that other stuff, too. Once, if it feels like it's doing enough of a stretch. If it holds me that long, sometimes it goes like, it's not. And you think, like, was that like three minutes? No, it's only one minute, but it takes time to learn for you. And you can set a timer, too. Hey, look, this is my timer to start, so I know exactly how long I'm doing it for, and then over time you'll get that routine down of what a minute feels like, what 30 seconds feels like. Okay? Next one. We talked about a second ago, too. Repeat the stretch, I say, maybe twice. That's all you got to do. You don't be there forever. People wait on you. You know? <laughs> like, let's go, people. But maybe twice is good for me, but the broomstick I'll show you in a second for the shoulders yes. is an exercise you may want to do four to five times in a rotation, just to get, which will may take you 30 seconds to a minute to do. I'll show you that one also. All right. Any questions yet? I have a question. Yes. I have multiple myelomas. Yes. Which is a bone marrow. Mm -hmm. yep. And sometimes I, I sleep too long on one side, mm. I wake up and sleep. Yep. And then I start stretching. But, uh, I don't know how much I can do. As much as you can. <laughs> That's all committed. As much as, and because I know you have good confidence, you know what to do, I go as much as you can. Okay. Some people go, if, when, they, when I hear the voice of, 
it feels so comfortable or I don't I don't I was told not to when I hear that like that I'm not negative but a unmotivated tone of voice I go let me work with you let me get this thing done with you get you, get you where you feel more confident you're not gonna hurt yourself why do people not stretch they're trying to avoid injury it hurts too much if it hurts when it's painful why would I stretch to make it more painful I want to get them through that that wall of being uncomfortable so they get to the point where they can feel that benefit of stretching where the muscle again gets longer, is more range of motion, gets stronger over time and has more endurance. If we're gonna build, if we're gonna stay strong, right people? We wanna stay strong, be stay dependent, we have to have, worry about the flexibility with strength combination. Has to be both. I don't care if you're 20, 30, 40, especially if you've had an injury before too, you have to focus on that, okay? First exercise, as you build a routine, anyone here has neck problems? Neck issues, I've had neck issues. My wife says I have head issues, but that's a different story. I don't know what that is. I'm not sure what that is yet. I'm still working on that one. How about that? So first one is called the upper trap. We've done, and we've done a lot of these before too, so it will be a repeat, but this is my routine I do. It may be morning, yes, but even throughout the day. If I didn't work out this morning, which I did, my legs were pretty sore, I may stretch again today. So I want to make sure I'm good for tomorrow. Okay? I, what I tell people, stretch today so you feel good tomorrow. We're going to have to feel good tomorrow. It's not about just today. Because we're not, and what's that going to end today for you? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. If, not. if I don't see you next month, I know what happened. But we make sure our day to day is good to help us tomorrow feel good. And day after that, too. What do we have to do? So, first stretch upper traps. I'll show you different ways. Take your right hand, you stretch your left upper trap. Upper trap means. It's the muscle that connects from your shoulder joint, out where your shoulder meets your arm, to the top of your neck, work behind your ear, top of your neck where the base of skull connects to there, and about T3, T4, which is down your spine, on that same side, so my left side, my spine about right there-ish, maybe right there-ish, okay? That triangle muscle, the upper trap muscle, you want to make that muscle stretch out and up, you want to bring your right hand behind your left ear and pull that. When you bring your hand behind your left ear, right hand behind your left ear, now turn your head to your left shoulder, the same shoulder. Turn your head there. Now let your hand, the weight of your hand, bring that head down toward your body. And hold that for about 30 seconds. I'll count for you. That's two seconds over. That's five seconds. Keep holding. It's been a long time, doesn't it? That's 10 seconds. Keep holding. That's 17 seconds. Don't look up, don't look up. Keep holding it. It's 22. All right, another few more seconds. Hold it, hold it. Hold, hold, hold. That's 15 seconds. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. 30 seconds, you're good, you're good, you're good. Good, good, good. That's a lot, right? If you just do it once, that gets the whole muscle and ligaments to stretch on that side. Muscle meaning from the base of your head again to your shoulder joint out in your arm, upper trap muscle. Also, ligaments in your spine on that side too. Now stretch in the spine, make that ligaments open up the spine. To make that, if you have nerve pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, help calm that down also. It's like a panacea for all type of neck issues. All right? So if you want to do the right side, again, I'll just demonstrate here. I'll bring my, my right upper trap. I'm going to bring my left hand behind my right ear. Turn my head to the right shoulder. Let my head come down toward my body. Get there to move more. I had someone come this morning, and he had problems where he had neck pain for two days. And pain down his shoulder blade down here. He's coming from his neck, so I adjusted him and had him do the same stretch. Hold that for 30 seconds on that side. Helps neck pain, arm pain, shoulder pain, also arm numbness, tingling, burning. Help the whole area stay loose. All right. Any questions about that stretch? 30 seconds is up. You're good. <laughs> Any questions about that one? All right. We talked about broomstick, right? This is the one, it, it goes exception to the rule. We want to rotate the shoulders as much as you can. 
And some people can do this. They can come all the way back, all the way forward. I hear the laughs in the crowd, the cackles. Okay, it took me about three days over my head, three days. I tore my left shoulder a long time ago. But now I do it every day, so my shoulders stay loose every day. I don't want to mess around with it. I've got to work every day. I still have to pay my taxes, everything else, to pay for Social Security, all of it. If that's too much, what right, people do is start, is go again where they're com uncomfortable, hold for about five seconds, then come back down to the front and do that five times. Was coming up wherever you're, and when have people start at the very end of a broomstick or a swift or whatever you have, come all the way back, hold where it's uncomfortable, head up the whole time, and come back after five seconds about five times. Five and five. Or five and four and a half or three and five. Question yet? Yes? So why is it important to hold the head up here? Because you don't get the touch, right? This is part two. Now we need some here. After the broomstick, five times up. And then five times that, that's too much for you. Head up the whole time. So for now, we're going to do it's called the low back roll stretch. Okay, this is going to complicate one. So it's here. I'm going to have you do is take either start with a rolled up bath towel. Simple. Okay, anyone will do. It doesn't have to be a certain color or material or brand. Up to you. Take this bath towel. I use a mat at home, so I, I like you. You want it, You want to be on a hard surface because because you want to get more support, right? In a bed, you're just going to sink in there, and not even know what you're feeling. I'm going to take that bath towel, put my lower back here, and come all the way down, and just lie over the bath towel. Okay. If that's too uncomfortable, then take either a flat, a, like half a bath towel for one, two, or make it flat instead of rolled up. You more support. You want to do about one minute here. And you want to do one minute with your legs straight. Okay? So one minute legs up. Part one. And part two, the stretch is going to be legs flat for part two. Alright? Any questions about that? What this will do is make that, make your lower back now stretch open. A lot of the stretch is open, you decompress your lower back. Using just your body weight, not some type of crazy machine or something you have to buy on Amazon or one of those uh, infomercials, per se. Use a simple bath towel. Tell my patient what's your favorite color? Use that bath towel. Simple. simple. If you have call, yes. When you bend the knee, you hold it. It's 30 seconds all. I'm sorry, one minute, one minute. And some of you are comfortable, so I have them go 30 seconds to start if they're in pain. And work up to them when they're ready. You can use the same towel if you want to modify it for your upper back, too. Up here, maybe the upper back portion, and here, lie over that bath towel again. Here, if you're, if, you're, if you're comfortable with it, then bring your arms above your head to get that full stretch also, that area. All right. Any questions about that? Simple, easy? Now show us how you get up off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh, that's On my simple. knees. One leg up and then push up with my hands. Boom. Do that again. Sure. After. Good. So, if I'm gonna get off the floor, I'm gonna turn on my turn on my stomach. I'm gonna go on my knees, my hands. I'm gonna bring one leg over. I'm gonna push my both hands on that knee and get my my push up with my hands on my knee to stand up. That shows so, how if there's a chair nearby. Good. If if <laughs> like this. Okay, I'm going to put that chair right there. I'm going to go back on my knees again. I'm going to use that chair as my leverage. Put my legs still up and push off on that chair here. I want to use my, I want to make sure two legs are right next to me to use that pressure to push myself up. If you don't have arms and I can't help you, I don't know what to do. I want to know you. Yes. Ask for help. We're a life alert button. My grandma had one for a long time. My, my dad had got my grandma one for a long time, a life alert button. But make sure you check the battery. She had changed out for about five years. It don't last that long. So that's my only complaint. You don't have to check the battery very often. It reminded you. Yes. Another one is here. I like this one. If you're already on the ground or even in bed, it's fine too for this one. Is lying down. 
And then from here, bring one leg over, the other leg with your knee bent, and now come over this way to, to the same side. Sciatica, low back pain, hip pain, leg pain, maybe headaches, probably not headaches though. Except your head looks like it's uncomfortable. What you want to do is roll enough where you get that leg to come over as much as you can. Over. That feels comfortable. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, and then switch sides also. Other side. Leg bent and that leg over with you the whole time. And in bed too, right? Really flexible. I do it every day, ma'am. Yeah. I'm an expert. Yeah. Be the example here. Wow. You know? Yeah. But if this is too hard to do, or if you want to go on the floor, if you want to get on the floor, you can do. The modification is going to be this, where you take, you sit in the chair, and now cross one ankle over one knee, sitting back in the chair, head up the whole time, and bring that knee to your opposite shoulder. Boom. Magic. Magic. I'm going to put like a little star, little star filter. I do the stretch on videos. All right. So here, your ankle goes to one knee. Yeah, opposite knee. Sitting up. And that knee to your opposite shoulder. This one, all the way across the whole time. Hold that 30 seconds. And then switch sides. Good job. Thank you. We're all going to have a tighter side. That's called being human. But still stretch both sides no matter what, 30 seconds. I like people to say, don't think about it, just do it. Mm -hmm. If you do it, your body will love you forever. I think you could get in a shower first and let the shower hit all your muscles to get them warmed up. It's accessible. Then it's easier to. It, but the problem is you're gonna go work out, you're gonna shower before you work out, then shower again. We're in a drought here. <laughs> you know, we're gonna we our rates increase even more. Save the water. You know, is it gas water bill's gonna be born in the gas bill. Gasoline bill. Okay? So just review on the floor or in bed, or this one, bring your leg over top to stretch out the outside hip, hip bone even lower back a little bit with this stretch. Alright. Opposite opposite ankle. Rocks it knee with that, with your right, so right. So I'm gonna do my right side, right hip, right low back, bring my right ankle over my left knee, bring that over across. Which side's the tool? Okay, quick commercial break over there. Now, the Cobra pose. This is a little bit, again, you wanna do this probably on, the, on a mat or a floor you want support. You wanna do, a full cobra is this. Good point to you guys a little bit here. Full cobra is this. We go here. Legs flat, body flat, hands to your side, and coming straight up this way. Okay, that's a full cobra. So you're putting your legs straight, feet straight, pointing your toes out away from you, behind you. And now you're gonna go from, you push your position on the floor with your hands at your sides, palms open and come straight up. Okay, if that's uncomfortable, you can't do the stuck, because I think that I can't do this because their back's too sore. Come put a towel underneath their top of their, of their shoulders, underneath their chin, and just stay right here. You can do that too? You can do that also. And it qualifies. Instead, instead, instead if, this, if this is too uncomfortable for you, hurts the back or hurts the arms or shoulders, right here. Get the back to arch more. Why do you want to arch in the back? Why is that important? So you can move. If our spine is arched backwards, which is better alignment for your body, better posture, the muscles work hard to hold you here versus being here. People come to my office, they're so far hunched over, this is even painful for them. So they start with a roll stretch, really light roll stretch when they're back first, then get them to do this afterwards. This is like an advanced version of the roll stretch. You can push yourself up even further back. The more body goes to extension, the more the bones move, the more the muscles stretch, the more you get stronger built of endurance. Hence, we're going to have routine down every day. Okay? Questions yet? Last one. I know you guys looking for this one? Great. Okay? This is called the downward dog. There's modifications too. So we'll go here, this way this time. 
We're going to come down. Instead of being flat, we're going to go on our toes. We're going to push back with our hands to allow our whole back to stretch this way. We're going to go from a what's called a plank position, straight plank, body off the ground, up to an actual pushing yourself back to a downward dog position. This is the full dog position. Full downward dog position, sorry. Okay? I'll allow stretch the back, the legs, the hamstrings, everything. The modification of this is going to be this, to where I use a chair here. And you can go here, and then we can go actually use the back of the chair first. We can push our, we can put our feet behind us so we're a little bit comfortable, and then let our body lean back a little bit in the chair. Does that make sense? When you use a chair, top of the chair to start, higher the better, easier. We go here, we're going to lean back with our body, keeping our knees locked out the whole time. We'll let our hamstrings, <coughs> our hamstrings, our calves, our glutes, and our back stretch out. The extension causes the compression, more of a stretch in the spine and the muscles. All right, if that's comfortable, then we can do turn chair around, use the bottom of the chair, the seat of the chair, the seat. And now, come down even further to more of a modified or closer to the, to the full downward dog. All right. Any questions about that? How long can you hold it for? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Boom. Questions? It's finding your routine what you want to do. You have the list, this demonstrations, whatever works for you. You can go through previous videos we've done two before here. And, and ask questions also, what about this stretch? What else can I do to make this looser? Like she had she had a stroke before too. You didn't have scar tissue in your body, right? Scar tissue, what is scar tissue? It's a very thick tissue that allows very limited stretching. So that scar tissue, may, you may want to stretch even more. So you want to make sure we're doing enough every day, maybe a morning, night, whatever you want to do, whatever location you want to do in your house or home or gym, so your body stays healthy, loose and strong. So if it's loose and strong, if it's loose, you're less chance of injury. You can walk all day long, but what happens when you walk sometimes? My calf hurts. Take a couple of days off, and it still hurts. You have to stretch enough to make your body stay healthy. Avoid injury. All right. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Good. Scar tissue. If you, if you think you're saying, well, yes. it'll go away. It'll just get better. It'll get better, but it'll never really go away. And again, there's grade one, two, and three, whatever it is, two, how deep it is. But you want to make sure you keep things stretched out. During, during the pandemic, the Y was the Y was closed. All the gyms were closed. Hard to work out because there's no gym for me. I don't have, I have my wife's five pound tape weights at home. I can't do much with that. Okay? So what I did when I when I, I was able to stretch enough with a broomstick because I tore my shoulder before, once I went back to the gym, it kind of hurt a little bit. But I kept this loose by using a broomstick every day to my shoulders so it didn't want to become too tight. If you don't stretch scar tissue enough, you're going to feel it when it gets cold. Knees, shoulders. I had a patient for Adele, she had polio. So her joints were really destroyed, really tight. She wore a brace all the time. Even when the pressure, when, the, when it gets cold and damp, the atmospheric pressure drops. At that point, the pressure joints increases naturally. She would tell us three days before it would rain, three days before. She would tell us it was going to rain. She was accurate 100% of the time. Joints were so tight, so much pressure. She could tell a little bit sensitive, so sensitive, you can tell the difference. By stretching out scar tissue, you're allowed not to feel the pain. Once you, once you stretch out enough where it feels good, get it stronger to keep that area loose. When you build strength, you're naturally going to stretch things out at the same time. So you want to make sure you, after you've done the stretching for the next step would be how to strengthen the area by doing, for example, for a shoulder, a wall push-up or a counter push-up. Whatever you have scar tissue, adapt on how to make that area looser and then stronger. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Yes, Deb. I was using, I forgot to use weights for a while. And then yes. I started using weights yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to stretch. So now, uh -huh. is it too late? Uh -huh. No, no, it's no, it's not too late. late. No, no, you're still alive. You're still breathing. I can. It's too late. <laughs> next thing. Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. But make sure, make sure next time, because the thing is, it doesn't feel tight until you feel it's tight. Yeah. After you've worked it out. So now, yeah. this is your warning sign. If you don't stretch now, then, yeah. eh, so at least 24 to, hours? Exactly. Okay. Wait until that soreness goes away. So the first time you work out again for a while, I recommend every other day. 
Oh yeah, that's better. And then once it feels decent, then go every day. For weights. For weights. Because yeah, once when you weights for the first time in a yeah. while, you're making the muscles want to break down, yeah. stretch it more it's used to. Yeah. In the plastic phase again, you want to get get that chance to rest, then go back. I'm wondering too, maybe I should have used uh, less weight since I haven't been using weights lately. It it would it wouldn't hurt just to again. start again yeah. and see and then build up from there. Build up. Oh, good idea. You know, at that point, it's, it's I tell people move the weight up maybe once a week. Yeah. You're comfortable it's whatever weight it is every once every seven weeks. days. Because exactly. people have most people have like a, a seven day routine they do, and then they and then add more weight next time. That's the plan. That's what people in January they go back the first day they feel fine. Also, wait the next day like they can't move. They're like ugh because they overdid it. Why do we work out hard the first time normally that we feel okay? We have adrenaline run through our body. Adrenaline kicks in. <coughs> Things under stress. So it feels great the first day. You wake up next day, you're like, I can't move. The adrenaline wears off and goes, uh, bye-bye. Oh, yes. It just works. That's all it is. Work out hard, routine, find your routine, whatever works for you. If you have any questions, let me know. Grab some food. Grab some lunch. Get the nap in today. All right?